So today we're going to make over the laundry room. This, we're going to take these cabinets out, this little wire shelf out, and we're going to put a shelf about yay high, and then another one about yay high, so we can put baskets on and get rid of this laundry basket mess we've been dealing with for quite a few years. So we're going to put this in there. We've got to take these out first, and then, of course, we got to unload them first. They're a little messy. Then we're going to unload those, then we're going to take those off the wall, figure out what we're going to do with the wall behind it because it's not going to be the same color, and then build some shells out of plywood. So we got those unloaded. What a mess. It's amazing what you can pack into that. I'm going to take these off the wall, and what we have planned for those, are we're going to try to make a nightstand for my daughter out of the cabinets when we take them down because they're just a single cabinet there and one there, and I don't want to waste them. Take that crown molding off the top, maybe put a, some type of top on there, I'm not sure if she's gonna put legs on there. My wife has a plan for them. We'll see what she does. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these shelves down and get this out of there, and we're gonna continue making progress. So our laundry room's fairly small uh, for as far as rooms go. This is only five foot wide this away, and then however deep it is from here to there. So it's just kind of a walk through going into the garage or the wood shop. And then about this deep here. So it's not very really deep. We're trying to maximize the space and get some good organization going on. We've been using a laundry basket over there that is always in the way, no matter where we roll it. So if we get our laundry up here, we'll get it out of the way. We got them off the wall. Uh, they were. Uh, this one was more attached with force screws than this one was with just two. So got those done and now we're going to patch and paint and start getting ready for those shelves. We're gonna build floating shelves um, for both levels. One level is gonna have our laundry baskets and the other level is gonna have where we can put our laundry detergent. And so we're gonna uh, basically just attach some boards across uh, these walls to, and then have a strip across the front of my plywood shelf. It'll do two things, it'll hide the plywood edge It'll also provide support uh, so it doesn't sag. So for my pieces around the wall, I'm gonna just use a one before and I'm gonna actually gonna cut that one before off. Uh, I'll cut it actually in half, but first I'm just gonna the width that I need for the back of the wall is five foot. So I'm going to go ahead and measure. I've already measured and marked it. And I'm just going to cut a five foot piece. And we'll just take it to the table saw and rip that in half. So the next thing we're going to do is going to find the studs in the wall in there and we want to drill through this one by four. I'll pre-drill some holes wherever the studs are, drill through that and then attach this to the wall into the studs because you're going to be holding quite a bit of weight. Not a lot of weight but quite a bit when you put uh, laundry in there and we just want to make sure that we get some good studs in there. And so I've got one piece that's five foot, I've got another piece that I can use for a two foot piece and a two foot piece for each side of the wall. So that's, it works out. And you'll just need one, one before if you're doing one shift. So we figured out the height we wanted based on the baskets that we have. And this is just a one by four, one before. And I've marked where the studs are using the stud finder. So you just run it along until you uh, find that screw and then it'll stick. And it does the same thing right here. And you can see that it's stuck. So I just marked here, here, three here and then one in each corner because there's uh, there should be some corner should be corner boards but this will be plenty to hold it up even if it's not and so what i'm going to do is just uh mark where each stud is and then once we get ready to attach this i'm going to pre-drill some holes in the middle once we get ready to attach this we'll just use a four foot level make sure this is nice and level uh, before we add our other boards over here Simple, very simple. They should be on 16 inch centers. So far it's working out that way, but you also never really know. All right, so I've got the marks transferred from the wall to where the studs are gonna be. I've got my countersink drill bit, and I've marked seven eighths of an inch, which is half 
of this inch and three quarters. Just gonna put that uh, approximately middle ways and just drill a hole. So this is a countersink bit so that uh, my screw head will go ahead and be flush in there. And all this pre-drilling does is prevent this from splitting whenever you attach it to the wall. If you, if you use just regular self-tapping screws, a lot of times it'll expand that wood and it'll actually split your board. So it's best to pre-drill. All right, so we're gonna stain our shelf as well as the bracing that's gonna go on the wall so that everything matches. Uh, so it's if you're gonna stain something, the, the reason we're staining it is uh, we believe that it will hold up better to those baskets being drug on and off, on and off. If you put paint up there, the top of the shelf will constantly be scratched up. So if you're gonna stain, I highly recommend uh, Memwax Pre-Stain Conditioner. It takes the blotchiness out of your stain or out of the wood, especially if you're using spruce or pine, birch, things like that and my wife dropped the paintbrush behind the washing machine full so <laughs> full of paint so let me go get that we're going to put the pre-stain conditioner on our bracing first and then we're going to stain it and then we'll attach it to the wall all right so while we're waiting on the paint to dry on the wall and I'm waiting on my pre-stain conditioner to dry before i put my stain on i'd like to let that dry about 15 to 20 minutes no longer than 30 and then we'll put our stain on let that dry a little bit and then we're gonna put those pieces on the wall and start working, putting our shelves up. So I know that we're using the sanded birch, such a beautiful piece of plywood, nice and smooth. It's just such a nice, nice wood grain. I like it. Uh, so we're gonna cut this down. I know that it's gonna be five foot wide. And so this is eight foot long. I'm gonna go ahead and take three foot off of one end and we'll work on it from there. I've got a straight edge that I can use. I clamp on there, use my circular saw just to use that as a guide rip that three foot off <clears throat> and then I have my Craig rip cut. If you don't have one of those, I highly, highly recommend you spend $40 on it if you cut plywood at all. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Basically it's a saw guide and it can cut up to 24 inches and make your life a lot easier. She's making me redo it. So what I'm gonna do is rip this in half because you got 48 inches wide. We're gonna have two equal size shelves. So. It'll be about 23 and 7 eighths by the time you take out the saw blade, give or take. So this is a straight edge. It has a uh, raised part on this side. I'll drop a link to all the tools and supplies I'm using in this video in the description below. And then this is just a common framing square. So I measured five foot of metal line and from the edge of this straight edge to the inside edge of my saw blade is four and a quarter inches. So I've, I've measured that over and so that I make sure I get that perfect. And what I want to do is square this up with the edge using this framing square. So this is just an edge guide that's perfect for using with circular saws when you're cutting sheet goods. There is actually another piece that goes with this that will make it eight foot long. This is just a little over four foot long, so it's perfect for plywood. So there's the line I've marked. There's the edge of the straight edge. I'll take my circular saw and set it there. And then we're looking right in there at the blade where it's gonna make contact right on the other side of that line. So I just got a couple expandable saw horses. I think they're like $20 a set. Very handy, especially if you work by yourself. You wanna be able to catch this drop piece so it doesn't uh, swing and break as you make that cut. And it also doesn't impact the floor. So I've set my dot saw blade depth. Uh, I use Diablo blades. This is a 60 tooth. It works really well. Diablo blades, I like them a lot because they last a long time and they cut a good smooth thing. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to cut my, my table underneath. Here we go. So this is the Craig Rip Cut. Very simple to use. Use it with any circular saw. So all you do is you, you set your saw in there. There's a stop block there that I've already set. And then you just tighten these down and it holds your saw in place. Just snug those up. They don't even have to be super tight. And then you'll set your, however wide you're wanting to cut. Uh, it goes from one all the way to 24. And then you just lock it in place. Now as you cut this side, you'll hold on the edge and then it'll just It'll parallel that straight line there is all it does. Just, it holds this on there, parallels that, 
get a nice straight cut. If you would like to check out the Craig Rip Cut, I'll put a link in the description below to it. So I've got a 24, it's actually about 23 and 7 eighths wide by five foot long piece of plywood now that's gonna be my shelf. And what I wanna do now is just sand that with 120 grit very lightly, it's already pretty smooth, just to get any rough edges off, anything the saw might have caused a little uh, flaking or the blade cut. We'll clean both these pieces up and then we'll start dry fitting everything. Probably gonna wind up having to trim some stuff uh, because never ever have I lived in a house that was perfectly square. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just stain these uh, boards or um, bracing boards. We're using Minwax min Dark Walnut for that. Make sure you get you some gloves. I just use uh, rags that I buy at Walmart. Any type of old t-shirt or rag will do. I'll typically cut one in half. If you wanna see my, my staining and, and finishing tips, I have a video on that. You just search 731 Woodworks staining and finishing tips and you'll see that. But just a quick rundown, I just take the uh, rag and wipe the stain on. I'm not gonna stain the back side because that's gonna be against the wall. So Kind of a waste of stain. Just gonna wipe this on fairly liberally. You do wanna make sure you get the bottom side. Uh, typically, if I'm gonna put clear coat on something, I'll let that dry for uh, at least eight to 12 hours before putting any kind of clear coat on it. And uh, with this one, we'll not have any clear coat. We're just gonna leave it uh, stained so that it has a flat look. Once I get the stain on, I'll take a clean cloth and just wipe off any excess. I'm just gonna put uh, three screws across the back. That way, uh, anything that gets pressure up here, it doesn't kick up. And the rest, I'm just gonna tack in with a brad nail, maybe a couple on each side, just to hold it. Uh, it doesn't need much. So gravity is actually gonna be your friend here. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut a piece to go across here, stain it the same color, and we'll brad nail it in, uh, five foot long. And what that'll do is just hold you, give you some support up here, keep that from flexing like that. So I've made this two and a half inches thick and what that's going to do is allow it to hide that other piece under there. And I'm just going to flush it up with the top and brad nail this in place. Bring my stain rag in and just touch up where we put those brad nails. And that added quite a bit of strength to the spance of this because this board will actually pick up the flex and not allow that to happen. <clears throat> I didn't show this, but I just used a quarter inch chamfer bit and I chamfered the edge of this board before staining and that just gives it a little uh, more of a finished look and it's not just square with a sharp edge there. So what we decided was to put the next shelf about two feet above the first shelf I've got a mark on the wall, got it all measured and marked.
I didn't take, uh, I didn't take off for the, uh, board. What a big dummy. I'll take off three quarters of an inch off each one. The sides? Yeah, off them boards. So we did it. So we did it. <laughs> so we did a mini makeover. We did a mini laundry room makeover. We did a today. reorganization. Yeah, reorganized. We reorganized because we were tired of using that thing, and so we wanted to get everything up off the floor because that thing was always in the way. So we went ahead and built, built just floating shelves out of plywood. So plywood shelves for the laundry room. We have a small laundry room and this is what we come up with we'll use the cricket to label the baskets uh, we got all this at walmart the baskets i'll uh, put a link in the description below to those baskets or similar ones So we did a in the wall there too, trying not to do it. Uh, yeah. Maybe. She wanted me to throw this in the yard for some reason. Okay, you get no virtual physics. <laughs> hey, thank you for following along this easy DIY plywood shelf project for the laundry room. If you want to see more of my videos, you can click this little box right there that'll take you to the next set of videos. I appreciate you watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you share this on your social media, I'll give you a virtual fist bump.